Hello everyone, I'll continue the series on the great Bobby Fischer with a game played in the Varna Olympiad in 62. And if you have seen the movie Pawn Sacrifice, uh, is the tournament, is the event in which uh, Bobby Fischer supposedly uh, had, uh, had a breakdown and said he wouldn't play chess anymore, he wouldn't compete in world chess because the Soviets were plotting against him, but that's really not what happened. And uh, it was uh, very much exaggerated in the movie, but still uh, one part of the story had to be true. And it's true that he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, continue playing uh, as, as he did before that. He didn't compete in all the world, world championship cycles. And the Varna Olympiad was a very strong tournament, first of all, because of the Soviet team. Of course, uh, they won uh, their, I don't know which, consecutive gold medal in the in the Olympiad. Of course, nobody could, conf could compete with them. Uh, their team was uh, Botvinnik, the world champion on board one, Petrosian, uh, Spassky, Keres, Geller and Mikhail Tal played board six. So you can imagine how strong the team is. Uh, Yugoslavia actually finished second with Svetozar Gligoric on board one. Uh, Argentina was uh, third with uh, Nydorf, with Miguel Nydorf on board one, and the US were fourth, Bobby Fischer of course playing board one. And this is an amazing game uh, played between uh, Fischer and Nydorf, uh, let's say the inventor of A6 in the Sicilian, even though he isn't really, but he is the guy the opening got named after and the guy who uh, developed a lot of the early theory in the Sicilian Nydorf. And this is, I have to say, one of the shortest and uh, most crushing victories against the Sicilia, Sicilian Nidorf I have ever seen. And it was just a brilliant game. And I can imagine how Miguel Nidorf must have felt, felt to be crushed in such, in such a remarkable way. Okay, we have e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, the open Sicilian. Of course, I'm not going to go too much into the opening theory until uh, the, the key mo moment. C takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3. This is all. This has all been played over a hundred thousand times in Grandmaster games. And now a6. This is the knight of variation of the Sicilian defense. And of course, uh, White could opt for several different options, several main moves. And Bobby Fischer played a move which was at the time. Uh, I don't think it was even considered uh, considered theory. And he plays the Adams attack, uh, named, named after Michael Adams with h3. So the move h3 uh, has a fairly simple plan behind it. It's to play g5, g4, I'm sorry, bishop to g2, fianchetto of the bishop, or just crash through with the pawns. And the normal continuation, the main line of the Adams attack is e6, uh, just trying to develop fast, uh, g4, bishop to e7, g5, knight f to d7, and now bishop to e3 is the main move by white. In this position, uh, black can't, of course, capture the pawn, even though it's attacked twice. I'll just show you that one trick in the in the Adams attack of the Nidorf. If black takes on g5, then uh, white is simply winning with knight takes e6. And the point is that the queen is attacked, the bishop is attacked, and if black captures with f takes e6, then queen to h5 is simply winning the pawn and the game, because the bishop is attacked twice. So in this position, after bishop to e3, black has to develop normally, and white has a fairly aggressive double-edged position with uh, an overextended g pawn, and the games played. I mean, uh, this has been played a lot of times. Uh, the most, uh, the highest rated games were Carlsen Nakamura, Caruana Kasparov, and Anand Topalov. Bo all of them played in the recent years, 2017, 16, and 15. So this opening is fairly common today. However, to h3, uh, Miguel Nydorf uh, replied with b5, which is in comparison uh, to e6, uh, which has been played over 2000 times, been played only 80 times. So b5 is a very rare uh, choice, which is simply saying, okay, if you, are if you are going to expand aggressively on the king side, I'm going to do the same on the queen side immediately. So b5. And this move is by no means bad, it's in fact a very good move and a very good reply. It's just considered slightly dubious for black because the, the, open, uh, the, the positions which arise from this are so volatile that black is usually the first one to get hurt because of being one tempo down, of course, uh, because he has the black pieces. Uh, now Fischer uh, responds with knight to d5, which is a good move. The best move would have been to take but uh, Miguel Nydorf has uh, clearly decided to play an aggressive game, so he goes for bishop to b7. This now increases white's advantage slightly. Now we have knight takes f6, g takes f6, f6 of course, if he takes with the e pawn, then the position is just busted. Uh, simply, I don't know, I think even knight to f5 would work uh, for now. Uh, 
gf6 uh, now c4 is played by bobby fisher which is a very aggressive pawn sacrifice of course the e4 pawn is uh, is loose and now uh, the best move uh, in this position was e5 for black and after e5 let's say knight to e2 uh, giving up either pawn let's say b takes c4 knight to c3 you can see that white has the classical outpost on d5 which is if white achieves that in the sicilian he's strategically winning and there's pretty much no way for black to compensate for such a hole in the center and it doesn't even matter that the, that the square can't be reinforced it's enough that uh, white can cap recapture with a piece so let's say knight d5 bishop d5 queen d5 this is winning for white and of course the c4 pawn is uh, is loose as well and it's very hard to defend so this would have been the best move but miguel neidorf after c4 plays bc4 which is worse but not that much worse the position is already dubious for black we have bishop c4 uh, bishop takes e4 which was the losing move uh, it's hard to suggest a move for white though i mean what do you play you can play bishop to g7 i guess you can play rook to g8 you can play knight to d7 just let go of the pawn don't don't take the pawn definitely don't take the pawn and now after bishop takes e4 bobby fisher simply castles and uh, this reduces the advantage slightly but it prepares a menacing attack which uh, which is hard to to defend uh, and now d5 is played by by neither which is another pretty dubious move attacking the bishop and bobby fisher plays a mistake in return a simple move such as bishop to b3 would be just winning and let's say e5 which would have been the best move rook to e1 uh, now of course uh, okay let me turn on the engine now you you have to see this now let's say let's say pawn takes knight queen to h5 and now of course uh, the bishop is pinned uh, if uh, the bishop is taken d can't recapture the bishop because this pawn is falling with checkmate so the best move would be rook to a7 which is pretty uh, pretty bad now let's say bishop takes d5 which would have been the best move of course the queen is defending but the queen is attacking as well and the bishop is still pinned so the best move here would be bishop to d6 which now this position just looks uh, lost and rook takes e4 so uh, after bishop to b3 uh, this doesn't work e5 rook to e1 uh, it doesn't work you can't take the, you can't take the knight so this simply doesn't work so in this position white would be simply winning but after d5 uh, fisher didn't play bishop to b3 he wanted to, he wanted to look flashy perhaps and the move does look very strong he played rook to e1 however there's a simple uh, mistake behind this move and uh, this position is now in fact much better for black and there's only one move that gives black that advantage and it's okay arguably it's very hard to find but what what neither played is just bad and it's visually bad he played d5 and now once again the the advantage has shifted to fisher's favor completely and this is this is now irreparably busted it's just an insurmountable advantage however after rook to e1 uh, if neither had found the move bishop takes g2 his position would be much better now there are two ways for white to reply to this um, the obvious move is to recapture the the bishop so after king takes g2 this is lost because dc4 let's say bishop to f4 that would be the best move queen to d5 check knight f3 rook g8 check bishop to g3 queen takes queen uh, rook takes queen and now knight to d7 is simply uh, two pawns up for black and there's nothing white can do the his king is uh, okay equally unsafe as blacks but two pawns up is just too much so um, bishop to bishop takes uh, g2 can't be answered with king takes g2 so the best move after bishop takes g2 would be the remarkable uh, knight to e6 and this actually gives white an okay uh, position and an equal game because now if uh, f takes e6 this is just better for white because of queen to h5 king to d7 and now king takes g2 and this position is now justifying the uh, the sacrifice and here if black recaptures the bishop then the position is much better for white and this is now plus seven or plus eight because uh, black is simply losing the queen so you can see that immediately so bishop takes g2 was a way for neither to punish fisher's rook to e1 in fact rook to e1 is a waste of time uh, he shouldn't have played it he should have continued with something simpler just just play a normal move such as bishop to b3 and since he didn't neither had a chance to punish him but after rook to e1 neither played e5 and this is just this is over now uh, the best move is rook takes bishop however fisher decided to interpose queen to a4 check first we have queen to a4 knight to d7 rook takes e4 
giving up the exchange d takes e4 but now knight to f5 and now if you look at this position uh, look at black's rooks the fact that Bobby Fischer gave up the exchange means absolutely nothing. His two minor pieces are far superior to Black's rooks. Black's minor pieces are either pinned or on the last rank. The bishop is waiting to get into the game and it will be able to do so in a single move. And the rook will be active as well. So this position is completely lost for neither already. He continues with bishop to c5, which is... I don't know what the point of this move was. Uh, since the bishop is first of all loose, uh, it's not defended by the knight because the knight is pinned. And secondly, is making it's making the king position even worse. We now have a, a knight to g7 check. This is the first uh, the first problem, uh, the weakness of the last move, moving the bishop. King to e7 is played. Knight to f5, a bit of repetition. King to e8. Now we have bishop to e3, developing the last piece. Bishop takes, f takes. Now queen to b6 was played by Nidorf, and this is now getting the queen away from the defense as well. And now there there are no pieces defending the king, just the poor knight and. Uh, these three pieces are are just too strong and usually uh, in chess theory it's uh, the queen and knight are the best combination for a mating attack and they coordinate coordinate well and in conjunction with the bishop as well it's just a deadly combination now we have rook to d1 first uh, double attacking the knight increasing the pressure morphy style getting every single piece into the attack Rook to a7, laterally defending the knight. Rook d6, attacking the queen and the f6 pawn, of course, because the, the knight is pinned, so after rook f6, uh, black can't recapture. Queen to d8, defending f6 and the knight, but pinning the knight to the queen and to the king. Queen to b3, simply double attacking the, b7, uh, the f7 pawn. And you can see that this attacking pressure that Fischer managed to create, despite his uh, blunder rook to e1, which uh, allowed uh, bishop takes g2, but okay, neither missed it. This is just remarkable chess. I, I'm enjoying this game so much. And when I first saw it, I was amazed at uh, how the Nidorf Sicilian can be destroyed fairly simply with such a subtle move such as h3. This move creates so much trouble for black that I think I'm going to start playing it against the Nidorf. I've never tried it myself. Now queen to c7 was played and we have bishop takes f7 check. Of course, uh, the pawn was double attacked. King to d8 and now after bishop to e6, uh, Nidorf simply gave up and resigned. There is... There's actually no way to save this position. This is plus 12 already. Uh, the best move is queen takes rook. Uh, if he tries defending, uh, defending the, I'm sorry, defending the knight laterally with, with his rook, I don't know how he's going to do that. Let's say queen check. Let's say king to h2. And now what, what can he do? Uh, king to c8 is the best move. Uh, knight to e7 check. King to d8, uh, knight to d5, and you can see that the pressure is mounting and this move is going to be a killer and white is just going to be simply winning. So uh, I hope you like this game uh, and the Varna Olympiad is a very interesting tournament so I'm going to be covering a lot of games, uh, Bobby Fischer's games first, but when I start doing the series on the Russian, uh, on the Soviet players and on the uh, others, grand, other grandmasters from the 60s, uh, first one is going to be Svetozar Gligorich, I think. You're going to see some more games from this tournament and you will see how, how exciting it was. Uh, and okay, uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you like the game and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.